Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to next lecture of our Synonym with Java course. And we have been talking about TestNG for some times now and we are going to talk about TestNG once again in this particular lecture as well. So in this lecture, we are going to be talking especially about one of the feature of TestNG, which is nothing but the uh, support of uh, data-driven testing with at data provider. So if you remember, in our last lecture, we were trying to put the data from a testng.xml file. We brought it from a parameters. And that parameter was quite good. I mean, we could able to see that it was just bringing up the data for us from here. And then it could able to pass to the test using the at parameters annotation. So it was all working fine and fun and good. But now we wanted to leverage even further if what if there is a way that we can bring the data for these informations over here because there are so many different parameters that we have got for this method and if i wanted to pass the data for these from a data driven attribute how can i actually do that well guess what in order for us to do that operation i am going to be using what is called as an at data provider attribute so how does the at data provider attribute work? So if you just copy this and search probably in this page, so you will see that the data provider attribute is actually used in conjunction with a method which returns a two-dimensional array of an object. So you can see that this method is a static method and it does return you a two-dimensional array. And that is how you should be returning it as well for your test that you're looking for. So if it doesn't really make any sense to you, I'll tell you how does that make sense while we start using it. So if I just go back to our test over here, and let's say if I want to pro use the data uh, provider attributes, just go to the data provider, uh, and then you should give a name of the data provider. So the name is like by default, it is the name that you can you need to pass in. It's going to be, uh, let's say, create uh, employee uh, as the name of the data provider. So let's give the name is equal to like that, right? And then I'm going to create a public static method, which is going to be returning a two-dimensional array of object. So O is capital letter. So something like this. And then I'm going to say um, create. So this is going to be the method name, really. You, it can be of any name, to be honest. And even this create employee can't be of any name. So it shouldn't be any problem. So I'm going to say create employee uh, data, something like that. So this is the method that we are trying to create over here. And this method has to return an object, like two-dimensional array object. Uh, so you just say return of the, uh, sorry, new of the object over here. Uh, and I'm just gonna open and close the uh, braces there. And this particular object for us is going to be returning the value that you're looking for. So what I'm gonna do this time is, I don't really need a two dimensional value to be written, rather I just need to return one single value to be honest. So how do I return it? Well, I'm gonna just say uh, return uh, an object like one dimensional array object where I need to pass the value that I am looking for. So I'm going to say, sorry, it's not written, it's new of the object. And over here, I need to pass the data that I'm trying to pass in. So um, it's going to be, let's say I'm going to create from the data driven testing, right? So uh, DTT user, uh, and I need to pass the work duration, which is going to be 9999. Uh, it's going to be ddt user at gmail uh, gmail.com uh, and the salary is going to be let's say 8000 and the grade is going to be i just going to keep the same thing middle so this is the data that i'm trying to pass in from this particular method so that is what is my idea for bringing the data from this particular method into this particular test method. So how do I actually do that? So how do I use this data provider that I have got 
into my uh, test method that I'm trying to do do it over here. So, well, in order for us to bring that value, I'm actually gonna let's say this time I'm gonna copy this method, paste it over here. I'm gonna create another method this time, and I'm gonna get rid of these parameters. I'm gonna say at data provider and the name of the uh sorry uh, very sorry about that it's not a data provider because we have already used the data provider here so i'm gonna stay within this test annotation you have a data provider method where you can specify the name of the data provider which is going to be the create employee in our case we can bring that up over here and now at this point of juncture I'm not going to confuse with the parameter and the driven test in using uh, the data provider. So I'm going to pass the admin and password as hardcoded value like that. But for these value that you're seeing over here, I'm going to be bringing up from our create employee uh, employee data method. So how do I actually bring that? So I'm going to say a string uh, name string uh, duration worked and string email string salary string role so once we have all these parameters been decorated over here i can now get rid of all these things and i can just keep passing these parameters that i have set up over there see now all the hard-coded values are out from this and been passed in over here in the create employee which is great so now that is going to be the case for us so i'm going to say test with data provider that's going to be the method name that I have got. Right. And now I'm going to go to our testng.xml file. So this method, this class testng.test, uh, testng.test.java file has got this method name. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use that method name to be executed this time for my test. So I'm going to say, let's get rid of that and i'm going to say class and within the class i'm going to specify the methods which include the name of the method so the name of the method is nothing but test with data provider see this is the first time i'm actually showing you how you can run a specific method that you wanted to execute from the testng.xml file so you can do it this way as well you see that the class which is this guy and the methods within this method you can include any number of method that you want to execute and this method is what i am trying to execute this time so that's it so hopefully it's just going to execute that specific method that we are looking for so let's see if that works or not so i'm going to be running it and i hope you got the idea of what we have did so far so we have created a data driven testing uh annotation and then we are trying to pass in the data from that annotation. And you saw that it was just inserting the data like DDT user because it was bringing up all the data that we are trying to execute from the data provider, which is this one. So this is the power of you to see how you can bring that data from an uh from another class file uh, from another method into this particular uh class file but now then question naturally comes Kati, this is so good i mean it is it's way better than how we just hard coded the value there uh i know this is not a beginner thing which i wanted to show you right now after this conversation is how you can actually bring the data even from better way like from a class file uh instead of you doing it like an this an object type because object can be of anything to be honest so if you want to bring the data from a custom type 
how can I actually bring that? And that's been used in many of the projects as well. When I was working it, I always recommend you recommend people to do that way. That is even more better uh, than compared to this fashion. So what I really mean about that, to be honest. So when I say custom types, what I mean about the custom types is that you can just create a, a model here. So I'm going to create a new package. This is the first time I'm going to create another package, like model. And I'm going to create a new class file. And I'm going to call this as a, a create employee or whatever. And within this create employee, we are going to create um, all the parameters that we're trying to pass in for the for the test method, if you remember, which is this one, right? Like the name, duration worked, employee, salary, uh, and role. So I'm just going to say uh, private string name, and I'm going to create private string uh, duration worked. And I'm just making it as private for a reason. So you'll know why I'm trying to do that. So private string uh, email. And let me just copy this because I'm just keep typing the same thing uh, of the uh, salary uh, and uh, role. Right. So these are things that we really need to have for the uh, for the parameter that we're passing in. And because we are working with the Java, we have to create something like a getter and setter operation. So you have to do uh, like what's need to be returned. So I'm not going to go deep into that because I know it's going to be confusing for you at the moment. So there is a very, very easiest way for you to create the getter and setter operation. All you have to do is just go to the code, hit this generate option. You see that we have got like getter, just go select this getter. And you can create the getter operation for all these uh, all these parameters. So just let this uh, put this uh, cursor here. Don't put the cursor there because it's going to generate the getter there on the top. Over here, um, you can first go to code, hit generate, and create getter for all of these. You see that you get all the getter. So just returns that variable for the caller. That's what this getter is all about. And then we also need the setter operation. So I'm going to go to the code, generate setter for all of these, hit OK. So why we need getter and setter is because we are going to get the value and set a value to this custom uh, class from the, uh, from the data provider uh, annotation that we have got. So we'll be doing that. And that's the reason why I'm doing all these things over here. And the final thing which I wanted to do it is I also need to generate a constructor with all these parameters just in case. So I want to generate that constructor as well. So you have got all these information generated right from the IDE itself. So you don't really have to hand code anything there. Uh, so it's all going to be done or taken care for you automatically uh, using this uh, using this IDE itself, which is great. Uh, and now, if I just go back to our test ng test there, uh, instead of the data provider that we have got something like this, I can now just go to the uh, paste this guy over here. I'm going to say create employee uh, with custom data, uh, employee data with custom type. And instead of returning the object of the two-dimensional array, I'm actually going to be returning uh, a single-dimensional array, which is going to be of the create employee like this. So this is going to be the one that I'm trying to return. So let me just return this value there. And now I can just create a new employee and I can pass in all the data that I, I need. You remember, we created a constructor. So I can pass the value into the constructor directly. So the name is going to be from custom data. And the duration work is going to be 99999. And email is going to be from custom data at gmail.com. And salary is going to be uh, something like this. And the role is going to be uh, middle, whatever. So you can create multiple different create employees right now, which is also possible. 
And we can have all these information in here. So what I can do now is I can use this create uh, employee with custom data to be used within my test method. So what I mean about that, so I'm going to copy this, paste it over here. I'm going to say test with data provider with custom type, something like that. And now I can use this name for this data provider that we have got. And instead of passing like all these many parameters, I can now just pass the type, which is going to be of create employee. That should be enough like that. See, this is more than enough for us to get the return value out from this custom employee with custom data type, this guy. This is so cool, I'm telling you. And once we have that over here, so how do I get the values for the for these things over here? How do I pass them? Well, guess what? You remember for the getter and setter that we have created in the custom type, we can get the value this time. So what I really mean about that is you can just say the uh, create employee dot, see, we have got this get name. And similarly, create employee dot get duration create employee dot email or maybe get email and create employee dot get salary and create employee dot get role so this should get you all the values that you are looking for from the custom method that you have created so because you have got the uh, getter operation there i think because we are not setting the value directly uh from the uh, from the method we don't really need a setter operation so this is completely not relevant for at least this code that we are trying to write over here so this should be more than enough for you to do it so that's all this should just works for us as well so let's see how we can execute this so if i just go back to the test XML file as i told you this code is going to be a bit more tricky compared to the earlier one. Um, but yeah, th this is another way for you to do it. And most of the people, to be honest, use this way of doing it. There is also another way for you to use these kind of complex boilerplate code is to use a, a plugin called as Lambok in Java. So the Lambok plugin will make your life even more easier. So you can just go to Lambok uh, and then, yeah, Project Lambok. And you see that this guy will help you uh, generate the getter and setter uh, for you automatically. So it reduces the boilerplate code. So you can do that as well if you wanted to. But yeah, that's that's all about this one. And now if I uh, try to run this code and see what's going to happen. So you see that I'm using the test with data provider custom type. So if I just try to run the XML file, you see that the browser is opened you see that it's bringing from custom data which is nothing but this value so it is bringing all these values for us this time and that is how you do data driven testing from testng.xml file uh, with these operations so this is how we can perform data driven testing using the at data provider attribute uh, with passing the data either from an object type or from a custom object type in a very, very, very easier fashion. And I hope it all makes sense to you. Catch you in the next one where we are going to be talking about how we can run this testing.xml uh, test file from a command line interface.